Hello everyone, my name is Tucker. I'm here to talk about these marvelous new Panasonic cameras we have and um, I'm going to just do kind of a quick tutorial showing you all the little widgets and buttons you can push and what they all do and how to make a good video using this camera. And I'm doing so with uh, this, uh, with it itself. <coughs> um, so let's get started. The cameras come uh, standard with a set of gear that we always include with all of our cameras. Um, the camera itself has a battery that is on it right here. Um, it has an SD card, which is kept in here, a 16 gigabyte SD card. And it comes with an extra battery, a USB cable to get the footage from the camera into a computer, and power adapters cables. <clears throat> it also comes with a case big giant huge orange case that has a bag tag on it with all the stuff that is actually contained inside of it um, on the back here. So there's a picture of all the stuff that they come with. Uh, when you do check out this camera from PEPS, make sure that all of this equipment is actually in the case when you pick it up because when you bring it back, if something's missing, the PEPS student will yell at you and you might be actually in trouble for having to pay for new ones. So it's always good to check yourself and not think that the PEPS student did it all for you. Make sure that everything's in the case, go over it with the PEPS worker, and uh, as long as you've done that, then everything's good. <clears throat> so let's talk about this little guy. Um, it yells at you when you do things that are weird to it. So anyway, what um, we're looking at now is the camera. Uh, let's kind of talk about some of the little things it has on it. Um, on this far side here, it has, that's where we would plug in the AC adapter that we talked about. It's got a switch that goes from playback to video camera to still camera. Um, most video cameras and still cameras nowadays that are digital can do both video and still. We have cameras that are meant specifically for still, even though they can do video. And we have these video cameras that can do uh, still camera photography, but really um, borrow a still camera from us if you want to do pictures and borrow one of these if you want to do video. So right now it's turned on to the video camera button so we can actually do video camera e things. If it's turned on the camera one, then it has a shutter release button right here. So this was how you make a picture. With the video camera, which is the middle one, it's actually up here, a little red guy that turns on and makes it start recording. On the very top of the camera is a toggle switch. It does telephoto and wide angle, meaning you know it's the zoom function. You can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, when it's in playback, this actually is also the volume for uh, listening back and watching your footage. These cameras also come with these weird little flash shoes that uh, they do come off. Uh, so make sure that you, you know, that's included with the camera. Uh, this is for plugging in an external uh, microphone of some sort. Let's talk about what's inside the camera here. There's your power button. It has an HDMI out. That's a mini H HDMI. Uh, we do not include the cables for that with this, but if you do want to borrow one, we, we have plenty of them in our back. It has an AV Multi, which is, uh, again, a special cable that will actually go out to uh, your standard video. <clears throat> um, so that would mean the uh, yellow, red, and white, the video uh, right and left audio uh, things. We don't include that cable either, but you're more than welcome to borrow one from us if you want. It has a mic input button, so that's where you can plug in something like this little microphone here if you want to have better sound, which is why, again, we have that flash shoe on there. Uh, then it has a couple of different buttons. <clears throat> it has a shoe adapter release. This is actually what takes that little shoe off. There's your USB port. That's where you're going to plug in your USB cable in order to get it into your computer. It has OIS, which is uh, basically camera shake. So it actually will do, uh, I think it's optical image stabilization is what that OIS stands for. And then it has Intelligent Auto and Manual as a toggle button. Intelligent Auto is what we're going to talk about today because it's kind of the easiest thing to do and we're going to leave it alone and that's what I would suggest you shoot with. If you want to know more about manual settings, um, you can always come into PEPS and make an appointment with us and we can go over some of the more manual stuff. Um, generally, if you're not a cams major, you probably don't need to worry too much about manual stuff on this camera. So. 
the camera itself has a touch screen uh, interface for doing some of your more you know, fancy settings. And so if I touch that, I can hit menu. It has the different choices here, record setup, picture, and setup. Let's go to the record setup. On the inside, it has, uh, I'm going to just kind of talk really quickly about what these different things are. Scene mode um, is the different types of things. You can do portrait, you can do baby pictures, uh, hazy sunlight, snow, sports, beach, um, and portrait. Um, you'll notice that it's defaulted to off. That's where I would leave it because those are all really ridiculous. It has a zoom mode. Um, what that'll do is, uh, it has intelligent zoom and I don't know what D-zoom stands for. Um, those are all, oh, digital zoom, I'm sorry. Digital zoom, don't ever do digital zoom. That'll actually make a really bad picture. Um, and intelligent zoom is something that basically looks for a human's face and then zooms in on them or something. Um, it's really frustrating. Uh, if you want to zoom, just use the toggle switch on the top. That zooms just fine. Ignore the special computer zoom because that's just ridiculous. Uh, the one thing I do want to talk about, however, is the uh, choices, uh, the record mode choice. Right now you'll notice it's set on iframe. What is iframe? iframe is the right size that Macintosh computers like the most. So that would be something that iMovie uh, or Final Cut Pro would be very, very happy to use. All of the other settings that are the high def ones, uh, the 1920 high def things, are what's known as AVCHD which is a very, very fairly common thing in these little cameras. The problem is that um, a lot of computers hate them. Now, if you use the Panasonic software that comes with this with a Windows um, computer, running something like Premiere or even Movie Maker, the software that this has that comes bundled with it will do a lot of really cool stuff and get the footage off your camera for you, etc., etc. Macintoshes just want to pull footage off of cameras. So if you are shooting in any of these things, you might have to come to PEPS to have help actually translating these files into something you can use on a Macintosh computer. If you're smart, you'll make sure that you have it set to iframe, which is what they should all be set for anyway, because most of the, the computers on campus are actually uh, Macintosh computers. So we'll leave that on iframe. Uh, face recognition, it'll actually look for uh, human faces uh, and do little weird like round circles around them and focus on them and everything. Um, I have that set off because it's annoying. <laughs> it's up to you. Um, it has a whole bunch of different fade and fade colors and things that so if you if you start it, it'll fade in and then it'll you'll stop it and it'll fade out. Um, we usually have that off because it's really annoying to have those fades in there, especially if you're going to be using software like iMovie to actually put your video together. You can put fades in with the software, so I don't know why you'd want to do it in the camera. Um, that's been around for a thousand years. That was even on old DV cameras. It's just really horrible. The rest of the stuff I'm going to ignore because it's not very important. You just want to shoot. So, how do you shoot? Well, it's on intelligent auto, which means it's going to do pretty much everything for you and react to what kind of lighting situation it has. Um, it, you can zoom with the toggle, and you'll notice that I can zoom in, whoa, zoom out. Wow, isn't that great? And then you're going to be pushing this button here to actually start the recording. When I push that button, it's going to start counting. It has a time code. And so let's say you want to use one of our little teeny mini uh, shotgun mics, just like this. What you're going to do is you're going to actually put it onto the flash shoe. And um, the flash shoe is right there. It has a little attachment here. And you're just going to tighten it down so it doesn't fall off. Do not you know, really push on there. You just tighten it enough where it's firmly on the, on the base of there. And then you're going to take it and you're going to turn on the mic. Uh, it'll, when you turn on the mic, that little battery light will flash just really quickly. That tells you the battery is good. And we're going to plug in the microphone. And you'll notice it says, um, external mic will partially obstruct image in a wide zoom position. Um, that's actually not true if uh, shotguns. You'll notice that the lens is way up here and the microphone's back here and there the two shall meet. Uh, if you check out one of our big shotgun mics and put it on there, it's that yeah, sure enough, the tip does go quite a bit further. And so if you're zoomed out, this will actually show up. Um, and that would be very embarrassing on the video. So um, just make sure you don't do that. And 
Uh, you'll notice that the audio is showing up there as a little digital reader. Uh, that's perfect. That means that it's actually getting audio and everything's happy. Uh, if you see something like this, I just turned off the mic, you'll notice that the digital reader isn't doing anything. That's because the, the mic is off. So uh, you have to make sure the mic is on or there's no audio going on to this video. If you plug in an external mic, camera will generally turn off its own internal microphone and depend on that external microphone. So make sure that you turn it on and you'll notice it has turned it on and oop, there we go. And so just make sure that that's actually working whenever you use an external mic. Thanks. Um, anyway, so I'm shooting video now. It's running. Uh, that's all there is to it. When I stop, I push the stop record button again and it's uh, made a video. When you are ready to get this into the computer, it's uh, always very, very important to turn off the system first before you plug it into the computer. You'll be taking your USB cable, plugging the USB into the side here, and plugging the other one into your computer. Then you use iMovie, can import the video right from this, cam this camera, or Final Cut Pro, same thing. Um, so you'll be doing that through the software. If you have any other questions about this camera, you can always get in touch with us at PEPS in the Idea Lab at the White Center for Creativity at Carleton College. So thank you very much for watching.